say now more than any other time in perhaps all of human history, we are being told on a daily basis that technology is going to fix all of our problems. But you've noticed, surely, that the definition of what a problem is, that keeps changing too. I mean, a problem fixed by technology used to be something like, wow, my house is really dark. And oil lamps are really problematic, so electricity was invented, and now we have light bulbs. But today, that's not enough, because today the opinion is, man, it really sucks to have to physically get up and go over to a wall and flip on a light switch. I mean, that's so labor-intensive. Why can't we just have computers linked to our entire house and do all of it for us? You got it. I mean, you could see where we're on the path towards living in the cartoon Wall-E. And as the definition of a problem keeps getting enlarged to include more and more quote-unquote problems, that is extending to our physical being, the natural state of just being a human. The natural parts of how we function as human beings is being looked at for technological correction. You, as a human being, right now are trapped in this body. And I saw this a while back. I'm, I'm just trying to get caught up on all these things because all these things are happening so quickly these days that you can't even keep up with it, hardly at all. It's, it's rather insane, but then again, you guys know we've been in the Twilight Zone for how long now? I, I don't remember when we all stepped into it specifically. It could have been my whole entire life, but I feel like there was a moment Anyway, this researcher is talking about building a light switch into your brain to flip your sleep on and off whenever you want. She starts out talking about what sleep is. We humans spend a third of our lifetime asleep. We sleep more as babies and less in old age. Other animals also sleep. <laughs> we sleep. Also animals sleep. Yes, thank you. Let's just move ahead. We now know that both REM and non-REM sleep are controlled by dedicated, precisely wired circuits in the brain. And when these circuits are damaged due to disease or aging, we develop all kinds of sleep-related problems. So the goal of my research team is to figure out the sleep circuits so that we can improve and perhaps even control sleep. They're going to improve and perhaps even control it. They want to control it and improve it. Because everything we're doing is so, you know, we're just, we're puny, weak humans. Why wouldn't we want to just control all of our natural bodily processes by technology? The good news is that we already have a rough idea of where to look. We know that the sleep circuits are likely in the hypothalamus and brainstem. But the bad news is that these brain regions are not just involved in sleep control. In fact, the neural circuits controlling feeding, body temperature, heart rate, parental behaviors, and various emotions, they're all very tightly packed together, even spatially intermingled with the sleep circuit. Which means if they can use this technology to control your sleep, why wouldn't they be able to use it to control all of those other things that she just mentioned? I mean, we, we get into a lot of this in our film, in the minds of men that we put out. So I'm not going to go over all of that right now, but all of, this, all of this research they're doing today is based on all of that research they did back then. Although at the time when they were doing it, they were keeping it very secret. Today it's called the Brain Initiative. It's got your same exact people that you're, you're used to, the Rockefeller Foundation and DARPA. And they're doing the same stuff, only on a much more advanced level. And they're doing it publicly because, I mean... They know no one's really paying attention or even thinking about it in those terms because we've all embraced technology in our lives these days. But this, what she's talking about right here, I don't see how it's much different from Dr. Jose Delgado, who was putting electrodes in the brains of rats, cats, monkeys, people, bulls, whatever, and controlling them and calling them electronic toys. I mean, what's the difference if we're going to put switches in our brain that turn off and on natural functions. And to make life even harder, we have a hundred billion neurons in the brain. And each single neuron has many long and thin processes for connecting with other neurons. So instead of an electronic circuit neatly designed by engineers, the brain is more like a bowl of spaghetti, very difficult to entangle. 
your brain is a bowl of spaghetti, it's hard to untangle. Gee, I think that might be because we're not supposed to untangle it? Just a thought. Fortunately, the neurons serving different functions often turn on different genes and produce different proteins in order to do their jobs. In other words, they contain distinct cell markers. And if we can figure out these cell markers, we can actually use them to single out the real culprit from the other suspects. And once we identify the sleeping neurons, we can label them with distinct colors so we can look at them, which is a lot of fun. I like to do that. You know, when you're just trying to have some fun, like on a Friday, hey, what do you want to do tonight, guys? I like to find the neurons that control sleep and label them with colors. It, so we can look at them and identify them. It's super fun. But more importantly, we can actually introduce light sensitive proteins specifically into the sleep neurons so that we can use light to either activate them or shut them down. Optogenetics. That's what they're talking about. We know that neurons function by firing these little electrical impulses called spikes. And it's the propagation of spikes in various brain networks that controls behavior. Note that she just said controls behavior. Again, not just sleep. So if we can use light to control spiking of the sleep neurons, we can control whether the animal goes into sleep or wakes up. What we found is that when we turn on light to activate these neurons, we can reliably convert non-run sleep to run sleep within a few seconds after we flip the light switch. So we think we can control precisely when the mouse starts dreaming. Yeah, they're doing this in mice. It's not just turning your sleep off and on, like a literal light switch, but they can control when you're dreaming or not. Identifying the key elements of the sleep control mechanism might also allow us to apply external control of these elements to normalize sleep when the natural circuit malfunctions. Okay, applying external control. Just that phrase, period. She even uses a graphic at one point, which basically shows a man's head that's a bunch of gears with a twisty knob in it, literally like a wind-up robot from the 50s. At the moment, our technique for controlling mouse sleep is not yet applicable to humans because it involves injection of virus and insertion of optic fibers into the brain. Yay, injections of viruses and optic fibers in your brain. Sounds awesome. But when safer techniques are developed for humans, we could potentially turn sleep on and off at will. So my question for the audience is, if that becomes possible, do we want sleep on demand? Thank you. <laughs> Off at will. You want to hope it's yours. Good luck with that. Did you hear that in the audience? They're like, yes. Yay. Clap, 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 clap. That's what I mean. Why are these people just like lining up for their own potential? Ugh. It's just like, I want to face palm so hard that my hand just goes right through my head and comes out the other side. I mean, give me a break, people. Yay, please put a switch in my brain that controls. Ugh patrols my behavior through light and you could just flip it on and off within a few seconds. I mean, if someone did that to you and you didn't know it was happening, you'd basically become a remote control narcoleptic. So essentially, we'll be like robots. We, we will have a switch that turns us on and off in our brain. And you guys know how it, this kind of invasive technological intervention always begins with a plausible reason. With the rise of EMF and everyone looking at screens and the fact that we have the 24-hour news cycle and the internet, I mean, day and night are literally blending together. I mean, everything is kind of meshing into one giant glob that is life now in our society. And so there's a huge rise in people having insomnia and problems sleeping. I know that I have a lot of friends who all the time, they're like, I got to go take some melatonin. I can't get to sleep. When did everybody start just taking melatonin? Just that by itself. I hear it all the time. I can't sleep. Got to take some melatonin. Now it's just, that's almost seemingly ubiquitous in people's lives. Everybody just has a jar laying around in their house because everyone is having a problem sleeping. But it's not because 
all this EMF is not doing something on a neurological level in our central nervous system. Like that couldn't possibly be it. It must be I need to take something to try and mitigate the symptoms of my technologically driven life. See what I'm saying? All these people are having insomnia and now science is going to come out and put a light switch in your brain to turn sleep off and on. That'll just be the way to save it. So it's as if as the technology is rising, we're also being conformed to be more like this technology. And it's learning to be more like us. This is the essence of singularity. I mean, this is how it happens. You know, we program the technology, it programs us. And, we're, and they want to make us more like the robots they're building. Putting a switch in your brain to turn your sleep off and on, I mean... Good sleeping habits help you get the most out of everyday living. Even on a superficial level, when you're just looking at this, if you were chatting about it over a cup of coffee with your friends, wouldn't everyone go, no, that sounds creepy? Don't I see ways this could be abused or misused? I mean, wouldn't that be your first thought? It seems like it, it, seems like it should be. We could potentially turn sleep on and off at will. If that becomes possible, do we want sleep on demand? Thank you. <laughs> oh, I want to switch for sleep. Make Turn me into an electronic toy. It'll be great. You know, screw with the signals in my brain for sure. I want to switch. Let's all get a switch. When this woman talks, they cheer when she's done. So this research is based on optogenetics, but it's a technique that uses light to control cells, typically to control your neurons. And they can manipulate those neurons and fire them on and off through this process. But when they talk about optogenetics, they don't just talk about it like it's a, a cool new technology they figured out. This was the cover story on an MIT technology review magazine back in 2014. They refer to it as hacking the soul, you guys. I mean, if that doesn't cause people to have just a moment of pause and reflection, I don't know what other phrase should. Hacking the soul? The cover said, new technologies that look inside the mind will make it possible to change what we think, feel, and remember. I mean, those are the essences of things about you that make you who you are. Do we want technologies that are going to mess with that? I mean, I think a lot of us have seen the movie Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. It didn't really go over super well. And it's not to say it will go over that way, but I mean, even at the TED Talks where they talk about how, you know, pretty soon we'll be able to plug our brains into the cloud and share our memories. You as a human being right now are trapped in this body. But once you are connected to the internet, you are no longer trapped in your body. Even the guy who was doing that TED Talk mentioned, you won't remember which memories are yours. You'll start to forget, did that really even happen to me? People will put open source their lives so others can download pieces of their lives and experience those things. That will be really strange. We won't know the difference between our own memory and a memory we acquired from someone else. And at that point, aren't we all just going to be living in Dark City? I mean... Sleep now. Why? I mean, why are we all just running headlong into this? It just feels like a bunch of little kids who came up with an idea they thought was really cool, so they're just going to go for it without really even thinking about the full ramifications. I mean, a light switch in your brain that can flip your sleep off and on, that can turn you from lucid dreaming to no dreaming to awake to asleep i mean can you imagine what if something happens and that thing goes haywire thoughts i mean <laughs> just you would be trapped in a hell inside of your own mind i don't know i don't know why it is my brain works this way but every time i see one of these things instantly the the horror scenarios just come flooding into my mind and it's it's you could talk about how this could go wrong all day why are we doing this as a society? Why are we doing this? And ultimately, as the tech encroaches on our lives more and more, and then our physical persons more and more and more, when, when do we get to a point where 
it starts to diminish our actual humanity. I mean, when do we get to a point where we're no longer human? 